A few people have inquired as to the status of the Fortress of Amplitude and my former live stream entitled Don't Watch This that used to be aired on Blog TV until the site shut down and subsequently merged with You Now, at which point I announced that my show would be taking a brief hiatus. Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with a quick look at some of the work that has transpired here in the studio, aka the Fortress of Amplitude. Now I had mentioned that my show was was only going to take maybe a month or two's worth of time off while I worked on the studio, but as usual, due to my own laziness and other factors, such as the availability of money sufficient to do some of the things that I wanted, this has ended up taking a little bit longer than usual, and there is still lots and lots of work left to be done down here before the fortress is ready to return to the air full time on a different streaming site, most probably Ustream. One thing that has been done, a very major thing that has been done, though there is still plenty of it left to do, is cleanup work. There has been an enormous amount of cleanup work that I have done in this room, most of it having to do with some of the wiring and the stuff on the floor. You see, I had a bad habit after using various things here on the show to just kind of leave them laying where they fell, and some of those things were trash that could have caused an infestation of bugs or ants or maybe even animals, stuff like that. Stuff that you really don't want to have in your studio, lest a mouse come along while you're live on the air. I believe V Westlife has a video demonstrating what happens when a mouse gets in the studio and someone is live on the air. And I guarantee you that while that particular person handled it with uh, pretty good composure, all things considered, <laughs> Well, that wouldn't have been what I'd have done. I'd have been screaming like a little kid. <laughs> Another major change that has been made here in the studio is the uh, delivery of power to all the various things that make it work. Initially, when I set everything up, I was uncertain as to the electrical load presented by everything here in the studio, and so I chose to split it across two or three different electrical circuits to avoid overloading anything. I usually split it in groups of where the equipment was placed. For example, this stuff back here was all on its own circuit. The equipment here in the middle of the studio, everything that made it work was on another circuit, and then the lighting and that camcorder over there on upon the tripod were on yet another circuit. Now I'm certainly going to leave some things split to different circuits, especially the microwave back here because it utilizes a lot of electrical energy and it's just not worth taking the chance of overloading something. But I think it's a pretty safe bet based on the readings I've done to see what kind of current is being drawn to put the lighting, the camera, and the fan as well as the main studio equipment all on one circuit. The reason being that I can then put all of that equipment on this APC Smart UPS 1500 uninterruptible power supply unit. This is a particularly nice uninterruptible power supply in that unlike some smaller and cheaper models, it has a true sine wave output that either closely mimics or exactly matches the power waveform that is put out by your utility company as opposed to putting out a square wave or a stepped approximation to a sine wave. Computer power supplies really don't care how nasty the incoming power waveform looks. At least most of them don't. Some that have power factor correction get all kinds of upset and may even cycle themselves on and off. But devices that utilize simple transformers and motors to do their work can sometimes be unhappy if you run them from a non-true sine wave output source such as a cheaper UPS. They can buzz, they can hum, they can run at the wrong speed, sometimes they can even end up overheating. And so fortunately none of that will be a problem with this particular uninterruptible power supply. I have also taken the opportunity, while not all of my computers are repaired just yet, to move the Dell Dimension 4550 machine that is responsible for generating the various computer sourced graphics, slides, photos, web pages, even live videos for use on the show. It used to be over there by that rickety ruined remain of a pool table. Now it's in the cabinet along with some of the other Blog TV, Blog TV, live streaming equipment. Obviously Blog TV is no more, so we shouldn't refer to this that way. <laughs> 
Oh gosh. Um, the Dell Dimension 2300 remains to be repaired, still has blown capacitors. Unfortunately, I also found a blown capacitor on the 4550's motherboard, and I suppose I'd probably better go ahead and change them all, because if one of them went bad, the others are likely to follow in rapid succession. I don't know if I'm going to be able to work up the enthusiasm to do all that or not. Maybe I'll just go ahead and replace that machine with another one from my stable. But there is something to be said for just repairing a machine that's already set up to do exactly what I want, especially in regards to avoiding most of the uh, automatic update uh, <laughs> booby traps that come along and pop up in the middle of a show when you don't want them to. A lot of them have been dealt with particularly harshly in that regard. The video setup has been greatly simplified, though this is definitely still in flux. I've gone ahead and switched everything over to a single larger video switch. A nice one from Panasonic that really only needed to have its contacts and switches cleaned in order to work properly again. As you can see, the buttons on it actually allow for you to place labels underneath them explaining what they are for. And while I have not actually done so, that might be a pretty nice touch for when someone other than myself, such as, say, the keykeeper, is operating the studio. And another thing that I've done is to actually go ahead <laughs> and label the various video inputs as to what in the heck they are actually used for, so that if something is troublesome, I don't have to play the fun game of which cable is causing trouble now and needs to be sworn loudly at, preferably while the microphone for the show is turned off, though we've certainly had a few of those bloopers in the past. Now, I mentioned in a recent video of mine, and of course this won't make any sense if you're watching this several months down the road, that I would be doing an all-star show over on DJ Aaron's Ustream channel in recent times for the Memorial Day 2013 holiday. Though my studio is nowhere near fully functional, I think that I can probably do a pretty good job of spinning some tunes because I've hooked up no less than three CD players here. This one from JVC, the usual Optimus six disc changer, and of course the Vector Research CD player over here which recently had a little repair of its own as its tray switch was being temperamental and I finally decided to break down and do something about it. So that's pretty much everything I've done so far. This concerns power wiring, simplification of the uh, video stuff, moving the computers, most importantly cleaning up the floor. There are lots of things that remain to be done as far as getting the studio back into good fighting trim is concerned, and not all of them are going to be discussed because some of them are surprises. For those of you folks who have been willing to tune into the show and give it a chance, which has certainly been greatly appreciated, one thing I will say is that as much as I like this Lexmark keyboard, complete with its little track point there in the middle, this thing is really too big for this table and all the stuff that has to be on it. There's just not enough room for the mouse that's attached to the encoding machine. And so I'm going to be trading this out for something that is smaller. I might just use the ThinkPad keyboard for that. Whatever it ends up being will definitely have a pointing device of some kind built into it, as that is pretty much, excuse me, essential to have. Well, folks, there you have it. That's everything I can think of to say about what's going on with the studio as of late. Some of you have inquired. Hopefully this video does a good job of answering your questions as to what has been done and some of what remains to be done. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one.